evening. I'm Bree Colwell, your prosecuting attorney. Thank you, AAUW and the Liberty Theater and volunteers for putting this on tonight. I was born and raised in Kennewick, Washington. I graduated from Whitman College, and then I graduated from the University of, uh, excuse me, Emory University School of Law in Atlanta, Georgia. I decided to move back to Washington State in 2000 to be nearer to home and family. In 2001, I met my husband, Todd Tucker, a wheat farmer, on a blind date. We married in 2003, and we lived on the farm just outside of Starbuck until 2009 when we moved into the city of Dayton. I was elected as your prosecutor in November of 2006, and I have to say, I have the best job ever. I love Dayton, I love Columbia County. I have the pleasure of holding criminals accountable, speaking for victims, working with excellent law enforcement officers, elected officials and employees, and living with you all in a great county. I ask you to reelect me as your prosecuting attorney. And I don't do it just for selfish reasons, because I love it. I do it because I have served you, and I have served the community. How have I done this? In the last four years, I have secured favorable outcomes in adult felony criminal cases. And what I mean by favorable outcomes is a guilty plea, a guilty verdict, or deferred prosecution under the law. So for adult felonies, I have secured favorable outcomes in 81% of those cases. That is better than the state average of 80%. In the last four years, I have had a 93% success rate when I take these felony cases to trial. That is also better than the state average of 86%. In the last four years, my office has secured favorable outcomes in 57% of misdemeanor cases, above the state average of 56. How did I accomplish this? Well, in 2002, when I was working full time, I studied for a seven month period and I sat for the Washington State Bar Exam and passed that bar exam. I worked nearly four years as a civil deputy prosecutor in Benton County before coming here. I have successfully prosecuted all types of crime, from murder to cyber stalking to cutting down a tree on one of our rivers. How have I achieved, achieved this? With every case I've prosecuted, I have learned. I've learned by listening to the community, to you, to listening to what you want, what you deserve, and what you expect. I have secured over $1.6 million in funding and income from federal, state, and local funding resources. My office has established paternity and secured over $150,000 in child support payments to parents and the state. My office is one of two counties in the state that enforces legal financial obligations, collecting thousands of dollars in criminal fines that comes directly back to the county. I have compassionately and professionally investigated over 65 deaths. I've issued hundreds of legal opinions to county officials. I've reviewed contracts and legal documents, reducing the liability risk to the county. How have I done this? I've attended thousands, or excuse me, hundreds of hours of continuing legal education and death investigation training. I am on call 24-7 for law enforcement inquiries and for coroner calls. I've done this work for you as your prosecutor while continuously operating under budget all eight years. I'm a proud Kiwanian. Turkey bingo's coming up. <laughs> As the chair of our multidisciplinary team, I meet monthly with community partners to ensure no kids fall through the cracks and that every kid in need gets the help we can get. This is above and beyond my prosecutorial duties. I have attended, uh, I've participated with SHIELD Club and Draw the Line campaign every 15 minutes, Spring Into Action Conference, and which focuses on reducing drug and alcohol use and abuse. I am past president and member of the Coalition for Youth and Families, also serving to reduce substance abuse among our families. I urge you, if you want a qualified, experienced, trained, and fiscally responsible prosecuting attorney, if you want to keep an asset in your community, someone who will continue to work toward a better future for all of us, you will vote for me as prosecuting attorney. Thank you.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Randy Lewis. I live on the South Tushy in Columbia County, and I've lived there for about seven and a half years. This is Columbia County is one of the most beautiful places on earth. You all know that. I don't have to tell you that because you live here too. I've been a lawyer for 37 years. I've did almost anything a lawyer could do. I had a private practice during all of that time, solo practitioner, ran my own business. Those were trying times. I was a public defender for 15 years, defending everything from misdemeanors all the way up to first degree murder. I know that the differences, there are differences between the prosecutor and being a defense attorney. We have different roles, but both are an essential part of the justice system. I also represented local government for eight years. I was the sole representative for a, a parish of over 50,000 people. I represented all the legal departments, uh, the council, civil service system, everything. So I'm well familiar with the problems of local government and all of the duties that that demands. I asked myself, before coming here and before accepting this offer to become prosecutor of Columbia County, if I'm doing this simply for a paycheck, or is it that I have a real passion for justice? I know in my heart and through my experience of 37 years that I have a real passion for justice. And I have a deep understanding of what justice means in America because I defended the lowest on the totem pole. And I know what it takes to get justice. I know that fairness in a system of justice cannot be shortchanged. I know that justice is not just a word to be thrown out by someone that is in a position of high office. I know that justice has to be worked for on a daily basis. And I heard all of the details by the prosecutor, but you must know that the devil is in the details. That one mistake by a prosecutor in a case can ruin the good things that a prosecutor does for the next thousand cases. It can ruin the trust that a community has in a prosecutor. It can ruin the trust that a community has in the justice system itself. It's my desire to restore justice and the belief in justice to Columbia County. I make to you this pledge, and this pledge was not dreamed up by me. It was dreamed up by the uh, Washington State Bar Association. But I think that it is so appropriate uh, that it will solve many of the problems here in Columbia County, excuse me. So I make this pledge to you on behalf of everything that I stand for and everything that the prosecutor's office stands for. In my dealings with lawyers, parties, witnesses, members of the bench, and court staff, I will be civil and courteous and guided by fundamental tenets of integrity and fairness. My word will be my bond in my dealings with the court, with fellow counsel, and with others. I will endeavor to resolve differences in cooperation and negotiation, giving due consideration to alternative dispute resolution. I will honor appointments, commitments, and case schedules, and be timely in all my communications. I will design the timing, manner of service, and scheduling of hearings only for the proper purposes, and never for the objective of oppressing or inconveniencing my opponent. I will conduct myself professionally during depositions, negotiations, 
and other interactions with opposing counsel as if I were in the presence of a judge. I will be forthright and honest in my dealings with the court, <coughs> opposing counsel, and others. I will be respectful of the court, the legal profession, and the litigation process in my attire and my demeanor. As an officer of the court and as an advocate as a lawyer, I will uphold the honor and dignity of the court and of the profession of law. I will strive always to instill and encourage a respectful attitude toward the courts, the litigation process, and the legal profession. I would like to thank you for allowing me to be here. The public is the most important thing here. The maintenance of this way of life here is the most important. And thank you for allowing me to be here. And thank the Liberty Theater for providing a forum here. Thank you. Addressing that to each candidate? Um, yes, we told us some of the things you've been involved in, but what she thinks is important. So you would like to answer that answer from each candidate? Yes, sir. Okay. And it was, what were their, would you repeat your question again? What they've been involved in, in okay. the community and how, especially <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Is it on? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you're right. In part of my opening statements, I got to share just a, a fraction of what I've done to be involved with the community, in particular, our youth and families. I invite all of you, um, because we only have a little bit of time, I so won't we'll go over, I have a, a more information out in the lobby that has a lot of details about what I've done. Um, one of my proudest moments is as president of the Coalition for Youth and Families. I was an integral part of, of um, the awarding of $625,000 grant over a five-year period and we're changing our environment in Columbia County to reduce substance and alcohol abuse among our youth. Um, that was a 122 page application. We were awarded one of 50 grants across the nation and 600 applicants. Um, I'm involved with the high school. I don't think I mentioned um, the interview program and we used to have an intern program that we utilized at our, at our office. I'm hoping to have that back. Um, I have, uh, I'm on the, currently on the policy committee for the CYF. I've been working with Rocky and the new principal. We're establishing um, policies, law enforcement, school, and the prosecutor's office that kind of all mesh together so our community knows what the consequences are for youth who drink and have drugs or, or use drugs to actually know what's going to happen. And the goal of those are going to be help, treatment, and engaging in our community. Also check out my website for more information about that as well. Thank you. Uh, it's the duty of the prosecutor's office to be of service to the uh, youth and family services uh, and just about every other uh, organization in the county that gets uh, any kind of public funds, uh, including, you know, the grants, getting grants, uh, those kinds of things. And as your prosecutor, I would certainly do all of that and more. Uh, I would also uh, have meetings with uh, all of the county officials on a regular basis to make sure that they're satisfied with the duties that uh, I'm performing and to take input from the public. I would have try to have forums uh, to do that. Um, the prosecutor's office is certainly an integral part of local government here in Columbia County uh, and should be, do more if possible to provide service to all of the committees that service children and those kinds of things. Especially this business of alcohol and drug abuse here in Columbia County. I think we, everybody knows we have kind of an amphetamine problem here in the county. Uh, I will make it uh, my business to try to address that problem. Um, also, I read that, uh, believe it or not, 
more Keystone beer is sold in Columbia County during hunting season than anywhere else west of the Mississippi. Anywhere. So now if you don't think that's a fact worth considering, then you're mistaken. And uh, more will be done by me to try to make uh, youth and parents aware of possible substance abuse problems and address those problems in advance. And I will be working closely with the local mental health agency in order to um, stem these problems because they are a bad problem. And now we have the marijuana issue and uh, we'll be dealing with that too. And the same thing goes for marijuana as does alcohol. Thank you. Any other question? In the back there. Questions for Reed. Uh, when you first ran for the prosecuting attorney back in 2006 or whatever, I think you ran as a Democrat. I want to commend you on getting elected as a Democrat because I know how difficult it is. <laughs> I was unopposed. So run, so run as a Democrat in Tony County. But now you're running under the banner of no party or nonpartisan. Would you explain the change? Absolutely. Um, when I first uh, was approached about becoming your prosecutor, um, I would say that my political affiliation, for lack of a better word, I haven't really uh, joined a group or anything like that, was Democrat. And I would say probably in this community, I'd be middle to leading Democrat. Uh, you put me in Seattle, and I'm a staunch Republican. Um, you put me in any fiscal committee, and I'm a staunch Republican. Um, but at that time, I did not have the choice to run as no party during that election. That was not an option in Washington State. And since I became a prosecutor, um, even in Benton County, I thought it was ridiculous that the prosecutor is a party. We don't make policy. We don't enact laws. We should not be skewed by our political beliefs. We should treat everyone fairly under the law that's passed by the people that work hard, that we elect. Fortunately, at the last uh, election, I was given the opportunity to choose no party. And I think that is the only option that a prosecutor should choose. Um, I've encouraged other prosecutors throughout the state to do the same thing and follow me. And they have, some of them have done that. All of them, except one elected a prosecutor, there's 39 of us, agree it should be no party. Because politics does not come in our front door and it doesn't come into the courtroom. That's why I'm running as no party. I think part of the problem that we might have is we advise our county officials. And if I am very strong, I have a very strong opinion, a political opinion, how is that going to skew my advice that needs to be fair and nonpartisan to those county officials? I promise you, it will be just under the law and not political leaning one way or the other. Thank you. you have another question? Here are my questions. Can you stay? And speak loudly. My question is for Reed. Um, do you have any political ambitions in the future? Do you want to become a judge or run for office or anything like that? Like governor or something like that? Marie? <laughs> <laughs> no. Take a note? <laughs> oh, I was thinking me, your job. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no. <laughs> um, my heart's in prosecution. I want to be your prosecutor as long as I physically can. God willing, I, I want to be your prosecutor. Um, there are some prosecutors that this is a stepping stone for the governor's office or attorney general. Uh, that's not my desire. Um, I do know prosecutors that have an interest in the judgeship. That, at this point in my life and what I'm doing and the help that I'm giving our community, the victims in our, um, in our community, and the defendants in our community, those that I'm helping, uh, I, I love what I do and I want to do it and I want to do it for a long time. Thank you. Another question? Lisa? My question is for Randy. Randy, I've had the misfortune to be out in your home two years in a row at the South Tushi yard sale. And this year I noticed that you had a for sale sign in your 
yard. So it's two questions. One, are you, are you or were you planning on moving? And in the past four years since the two of you were up before us, um, what have you done uh, that would make people that did not vote for you change your mind and vote for you this time? Well, I'm not moving uh, right now. Uh, yes, we plan to move, but we're not going to move now. Um, we may sell the place, but that doesn't mean we'll move. Uh, we're thinking about maybe downsizing. Uh, it's pretty hard to take vacations when you got a place as big as mine. As mine. Uh, you could get somebody to take care of it while you're gone and that kind of thing. So my wife and I have decided to be probably should downsize if we can get the right price for my place. Of course, that nothing is written in stone. And uh, so that's it. I hope that answered your question about moving. No, I'm not moving. Um, and of course, I know you think moving, moving out of state. Well, that's, you know, no, I'm not moving out of state. I'm staying here. I wouldn't have accepted this offer to become a prosecutor of Columbia County if I was going to move. That's obvious, should be obvious anyway. Uh, the other question is, what have I done to change uh, people's mind? Well, I haven't changed, that's one thing. I'm just the same ordinary guy that I was uh, four years ago. Uh, I'm a family man. I have grandkids that come out to my place all the time. I appreciate hunting and fishing and riding my motorcycle. Uh, I like the fair and I like I was a volunteer at Dayton Days. I loved all those kinds of things, all the outdoorsy kind of things here. I love Main Street and all the shops uh, and all the little things about Dayton uh, that people appreciate here and in the country scene. Uh, so that I think the answer to answer your question is uh, the main thing that I've done is I haven't changed and I've, I'm still just an ordinary common guy who uh, has always tried to live by uh, common sense and good judgment and thinking things out. Uh, and I often ask myself uh, before I do something, should I do this? <coughs> Which I should think be, would be the main rule for a prosecutor before he commits himself to a certain form of action is should I do this? Because people's lives are at stake. Thank you. So, and you had a question. Um, for both of them. What are your top professional legal accomplishments in the last four years? Well, uh, I have continued to practice criminal law, and uh, my legal experience of 37 years has made me an excellent criminal attorney. I uh, continue to represent my clients and under the highest standards of American justice, uh, to vigorously represent them in every court that I've appeared in and have gotten good results for them, those that have had the money to hire me uh, because I've not done any public defense work uh, in the last four years. Uh, so, uh, that is my uh, main accomplishment, that I have continued to represent clients in the uh, highest, under the highest standards of American justice. Thank you. Um, I suppose this wasn't the, a legal, necessarily, accomplishment, but when I talked about the community grant, that is near and dear to my heart. I'm very proud of that. As far as um, my career as a prosecutor the last four years, I would say um, when it comes to criminal cases, uh, securing a conviction for a domestic violence murderer is one of uh, my biggest accomplishments. Uh, you might recall the case, uh, Mr. Sheba uh, shot his wife twice, killing her. When he was charged, he was looking at a standard sentence range of 20 to 26 years. Um, I was able to secure a guilty plea and a sentence of 20 years. I did that without the expense of a trial for Columbia County, which I think was the best outcome, saving over, well over $150,000 and holding the uh, 
offender accountable and not putting the family through a, a further trial. I would say, uh, as far as a coroner, my death investigation into the young man who died at, the, at, the, at Bluewood, that took a lot of research, interviewing witnesses, um, reviewing policies. I was able to find out what happened to that young man and give all, answer all the questions that that family had, hopefully to give him some closure. I don't know if that would happen. And finally, uh, one of my biggest accomplishments is I know I have gotten uh, domestic violence victims. At least I played a little part in getting them out of unsafe situations and breaking the, uh, the cycle of violence. Do you have another question? Yes. Hey, uh, my question is really for both of you. We have this huge rise now in uh, cyber crimes, and we have the child molesters, we have the porn grabbers. Uh, I don't even want to experience been in those types. Of have you had any experience with prosecuting or any experience with computers that you can serve this community? And that's really for both of you. I'll go first this time. Um, really, our, our uh, society is, is computerized. 99% um, of the information we generate is, is electronic. Three-fourths of that never gets printed. Uh, law enforcement and prosecutors have really had to figure out how we are going to use this information. Get it, search it, use it in court. I recognized this problem, and in two, early 2003, I actually went to a, um, the U.S. Secret Service Computer Forensic Institute. I took a course for prosecutors. So I know how those little bits of zeros and ones are stored on a computer. I can get that information, I can search it, I can uh, analyze it, and I can present it in court. Um, I have, uh, not only do I know how to do it, but I've also prosecuted um, crimes that involve computer evidence. So I, I'm qualified to do it. During my term as an uh, attorney over the years and defendant, and I've asked you a question, no, I've never prosecuted anyone. I've always wanted to be a prosecutor. It's been a, lifetime goal of mine but never had the opportunity to be a prosecutor because you basically have to be elected or either hired by a prosecutor. An opportunity never arose so I've never been a prosecutor but I've defended thousands and thousands of criminal cases including cases that involved um, evidence regarding uh, computer evidence uh, for people using computers for pornography uh, and it had to be determined uh, by uh, computer evidence whether or not the person was actually guilty of possess possessing the photography, uh, pornography uh, and other crimes including uh, child sex abuse uh, which during the, my latter part of my career uh, I spent a lot of time because I had a lot of experience doing domestic work too I was hired in many cases involving where one parent to accuse the other parent of child sexual abuse. Uh, and those cases often won off on computer evidence uh, regarding uh, said abuse. Therefore, I had to investigate and spent many hours and took courses and seminars uh, regarding uh, the uh, use of that evidence and how to present it and how to tear it apart. Uh, because that's part of the defense lawyer's duty uh, was to how to tear the evidence apart. Well, I submit to you that if you know how to tear it apart, you know how to keep it together, too. Uh, you figure out how to make it work for the prosecution. Uh, if you understand the other side, then you make the cases better from a prosecutor's standpoint. Uh, so, yes, I think I do understand uh, computer evidence. And... No, I've not been a prosecutor yet. I think that concludes our session here with these two people. So we're going to have our go on to our hospital.